on behalf of the entire team of Enagery would like to invite everyone to our Sunday webinar session. Today that we are going to discuss is on education relevance of culture, role of folklore in the society. Very privileged to have with us Dr. Bitasta Das, who is the Senior Editorial Assistant at the Office of Communications. And we're indeed very grateful to have with us uh, such an eminent person with us today. Ma'am, hereby I request you to please proceed and take over the session. Thank you so much. And thank you, Team Enazori, for having me. It's the topic of the discussion today, educa educational relevance of culture, folklore and its role in the society. Folklore consists of knowledge, legends, music, oral history, proverb, jokes, popular belief, fairy tales, stories, tall tales, and customs, including in tradition of a culture, subculture, or a group. So it's the entire knowledge that a group can, you know, uh, possesses is called folklore, and knowledge about the group is also called folklore. Okay, so folklore is uh, the knowledge of the, uh, you know, community and about the community, both. It also includes a set of practices through which these expressive genres are shared. And what is what is the, what defines folk as a category? Common people are the mainspray of folklore. Folklore may uh, accompany the celebration of various religious, social, and family festivals, fertility cult, human and land, as well as problems of natural disaster like flood, famine, and fire, disease, and accidents, direct or indirect, directly or indirectly provide a theme of folklore. So it is about the mundane matters, okay, the day-to-day -day matters of human society. The actual source or authorship is not important. So the entire community owns this uh, knowledge. Okay, so uh, a person, uh, individual is not important here. Okay, like a folk song. Uh, uh, let's take an example from our own, you know, culture, a Bihu song. Nobody knows uh, who wrote those songs, but we have been, you know, singing these songs from time immemorial. So this is uh, the characteristic of folklore that it, there is no one author of, to it. Okay, the community owns it mostly orally transmitted, that is passed on from generations to generations by orally. Folklore are often a mixture of genres, uh, music, dance, song, drama. The division of music, dance, or drama is made based on the emphasis of the form. So let me give an example, uh, like, the, uh, you know, something like the Kathakali, okay? Kathakali would have a lot of music, it will have dance, it will have uh, storytelling, it uh, you know uh, there's a lot of uh, costumes involved but we call it a dance because the dance form is more prominent in the entire uh, presentation okay. the purpose of folklore can be summed up as threefold social transaction ritualistic, ritualistic performance and entertainment so why is folklore there in the society the you know the purpose of folklore is social transaction you are you know actually conveying something in the society while performing this you know this uh, practices Ritualistic performance, we do something as rituals uh, and entertainment, yeah. Music, dance are part of entertainment also. So what is folk? So can be any group of people, any group of people who share something in common. Any group that expresses its inner cohesion by maintaining shared tradition qualify as folk, whether the linking factor is occupation, language, place of residence, age, religion, or ethnic origin. Okay, so any group that shares something in common between them and so what are the different elements of folklore? So a category can be oral literature, spoken, sung, or voice form of tradition, utterance. So riddle, jokes, uh, you know, puzzles, uh, all this, um, you know, uh, slogans sometimes when we say uh, those can also, they are orally passed on from, you know, one generation to another. So they can be called, they fall under folk lit oral literature. Material culture, tangible elements, techniques, skills, recipes, and formulas. So anything that is tangible, that can be touched, is, falls under this category. Um, okay, the folk costumes will fall under this category. Social folk customs, uh, here the emphasis is on group interaction rather than on individual skills and performances. So customs that, you know, you, uh, you know, there are ceremonies where you do some custom, those also fall under, and they are specific to certain group particular group will be do, would be doing this kind of uh, performance, this fall under folklore. Performing folk art, the conscious presentation of art with folk instrument, dance, costume, and scenario prop, that is. So what makes folklore unique, uh, you know, encompasses one's culture in a deeper manner, in folklore context is important. So why folklore is important is that we are not looking at a song because of the song, the music part of it, but it is telling us something more. It is giving us a window to the uh, to understand the culture of that community in general. Okay. So it has a context which is more important than the actual uh, element. 
folklore is largely utilitarian. Um, if I can give you an example, uh, the Madhubani painting that is very popular nowadays. Madhubani painting is very utility based because it was, uh, you know, it initially traditionally it used to be done during certain occasions. Okay, it was to be done in festive occasion, uh, auspicious occasions. So it has a utility. Or is weaved into every day. As I so said, the context is very, you know, uh, it is uh, very mundane. Uh, you're talking about, you know, day-to-day -day life. You're not, you're talking about seasons and all that. Folklore connects the past to the present. So there is a connection from the past to the present in folklore, okay? Uh, yeah, because they have been traditionally passed down from generations. So they are actually connecting the past to the present. Folklore reflects the worldview of a community. As I said that we are looking at elements of folklore, not because of, uh, you know, uh, the superficial, uh, you know, uh, aspect, but telling, it tells us more that folklore performs some functions in the society, what serve as the educational tool. This is a Doha, a Doha from Kabir, Kabir's Dohe, uh, uh, which is part of, uh, you know, uh, the Central India's, uh, you know, folk uh, uh, knowledge. So, so this is kal kare jo so aaj kar aaj kare so ab pal mein pralay hoegi bahuri karo ki tab. So it is actually telling you the importance of time. Okay, it is actually giving you a knowledge that time is important, and if you don't respect time, you know you'll not succeed in succeed in life. It also gives essential life knowledge. This is an example uh, from Panchatantra. It's a story where uh, you know man and a woman, uh, you know they um, uh, the man uh, the it's, he's a Brahmin actually. He brings home a mongoose and the wife is not happy that he has brought home a mongoose but the man says that he is my friend and he will be living with us so they have a small baby in the house uh, and one fine day what happens is that uh, um, uh, you know a snake comes to attack the baby and the mongoose actually uh, kills the snake and uh, the wife of the brahmin sees a lot of blood in the floor and she says that the mongoose has actually harmed the baby and so people come and they kill the mongoose but actually the mongoose had saved the baby from the snake and they come to know it later. So this is a story from Panchatantra. It is giving us certain life knowledge that you should not be doing taking decisions in a haste. Okay, give enough time to understand the matter. Of a culture, this is a photo tattoo from the Gon community of Central India. They ta put tattoos of the uh, natural elements around them. Trees, you know, animals, flowers, they put. So this is telling us about the importance of uh, nature in their culture okay so the practice of uh, tattoo making is a is a folk tradition i'm giving an example from assam's culture this is a gamusa and when the act of giving a gamusa is doing uh, more than the act it is actually showing that the person whom it is gifted to is important so it is actually instilling or maintaining the political and social order of the society okay explain the in inexplicable this is a uh, um, art it is the you know um, uh, tree of life. So, in uh, you know, sometimes we can't explain why certain things happen. We can't explain how life came into being. So we say that we make stories. We say that life originated from this big tree, and every life has originated from this big tree, and the life uh, and the tree sustains everyone. Okay, this also tells us about the you know value of the uh, value that the people community give to nature. So emotion of the society. This is the non-prem festival of Meghalaya. This act of, you know, uh, dancing uh, with small steps, they are actually showing that they are tilling the soil and they are, it's a Thanksgiving festival, okay? They're, uh, the emotions, how will they show the gratitude to the land? How will they show the gratitude to the, you know, uh, the agricultural field? Uh, they, they're showing it through this festival that we are showing you the land which is giving up food. We are showing you respect and we respect you and entertainment. This is an example from Bhan Patel from uh, Jammu in Kashmir. Uh, this is the act of, uh, this is Bhan who would, uh, you know, dress up, uh, you know, it's not very stylized costume, but, you know, sir, he, you, he are, he would, it's mostly a man. He would dress up little uh, differently and he would be talking about certain things in a very comical way. And they'll ma he'll make the person, uh, all the, the audience laugh. Um, mostly this is used to subvert the, uh, pol you know, political order or subvert its anti-establishment basically. And they are making institute science what I, uh, what I have been doing with my course is this. So we have uh, brought out two books so far, uh, Arting Science and Jal Jangal Zameen. Uh, and uh, 
done jungle zameen in the age of science and technology so these are two books that uh, we have taken out so in arting science what we have done is talk about scientific concepts through indian folk art and in jal jungle zameen i wanted to go a step forward and uh, talk about uh, the environmental issues talk about the tribal issues of the country using indian folk art and what science and technology has done uh, with the tribal issues in one hand and uh, the nature at another hand so this was the first book i am showing you some pictures from this uh, first book arting science so the first one is this one is the mendel's law second law of inheritance and they are showing it in uh, the madhubani style painting uh, you know there are these two alleles and in one generation the there is one dominant allele in the next generation the, the alleles would uh, you know get divided into three and one so so this is the second law of uh, inheritance of mendel so we have this is what they showed and this is a very style, you know a typical madhubani painting they have done where a fish motif is very important and inside a uh, you know water lotus snakes they have shown tortoise with this motifs and a you know boundary border uh, this is a very typical of madhubani painting and they have shown the mendel's law in the next one they have shown accretion accretion is a concept in physics where a big mass is supposed to be attracting the smaller things from the smaller mass here they are showing how people are being attracted uh, from uh, village to uh, the city and in worldly style painting this longish one is a serial painting from uh, telangana here my students have shown the phagocytosis how uh, it, it is it's very relevant in today's time where you see uh, you know uh, combat between the uh, antigen and antibody and finally uh, you know the anti uh, antigen will had come to attack the body and the antibodies have you know uh you know uh, fought with them and they kill the antigen so how this is how phagocytosis work in our body how our resistance work in our body so this one is uh, you know church uh, church style painting here they showing metamorphosis here uh, you know how a, a caterpillar has developed into a butterfly here it is also philosophical how they you know this vices the you know anger pride and how you 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 know become a better pers person by you know diligence patience kindness so here they showing metamorphosis in ch church art so here is the relevance of zero in germany in germany roy style uh, kalikat painting here uh, the zero was discovered in india and how the um, arab traders popularized it in the world so here the zero is been shown so this is i the assignment that i had given them was that you, uh, you have to depict a science concept through indian folk art so they, every year i try and take one uh, new art form and uh, we discuss the entire country uh, using that art form in this two years uh, we have discussed paintings uh, folk paintings and this year uh, the other year we are uh, taken uh, folk theater how here they showing darwin's uh, you know theory through shadow puppetry they are in cho style of west bengal uh, they are showing uh, the tribal issues uh, you know how the big uh, uh mncs would you know actually disturb the tribal life and you know the ownership of the tribes from the land is lost here they are showing gender issues to uh, you know uh, uh, ras leela here they are showing um, uh, you know uh, this is uh, the ramayana they are showing uh, and they are showing the you know uh, how science and technology could have intervened there so this is another norton ki style they have shown this walk style they have shown the you know how a scientist can change the you know superstition the evils that are prevailing in the society and this is the anthropocentric view of view that people hold uh, they are trying to show it by uh, you know uh, norton ki style so this is i had taken um, folk dance and uh, the first one is dolukunita karnataka and the match group and uh, with the rajasthani dance they have shown uh, the four color theorem this is the uh, chemistry group and they have shown the surface tension through kuttu kuttu is a dance of uh, tamil nadu this is a dance from kerala and they have the physics group is showing the gravitational waves this is lavni of maharashtra and they are showing crispr this is the biology group this was the this lavni group was the biology group and they are showing crispr how gene you know changing the gene you can you know change the character of the individual this is a uh, plastic eating worms and uh, they are showing it in uh, you know uh, uh, the portuguese style of ramon and you uh, vira the vira dance with the vira dance they have shown the plastic eating worms here and this was the uh, earth science group 
So also in one one group we had taken um, folk music, and I had asked the students to compose, sing, and uh, record a song um, which talks about the environment. Uh, you know, which talks about uh, scientific process around them using a folk song. So this is a Malayalam song, the boat song of uh, Malayalam boatmen. Uh, and uh, they are talking about the water cycle in the atmosphere. So I'll play a bit of it. Ma'am, that was absolutely wonderful to hear. Thank you. Okay. I don't think there's interchange happening there. There is a, a the, the dominant society are being, you know, e even more dominating the, you know, weaker societies in the name of globalization. So yeah, maybe uh, with the, you know, uh, newer generations, you know, upcoming generation, we'll see a lot of influence of the Indian culture on Western world also. Yeah, meet, uh, I think it does have, uh, like uh, mostly in the po political narrative that we see, you know, during the political campaign, we see a lot of uh, narratives, a lot of uh, background that, uh, you know, there has been a, has been a golden past and something happened in between and we are in this deplorable state. So there is this lot of contemporary meet making that uh, there has been a golden past and uh, we have uh, lost it and we need to revive it. So I would call that also a myth that we are talking about something that we have uh, probably don't have documents about, but we think it is true. So it's contemporary myth making when you're talking about this kind of issue. Four component components are very close to people's heart, you know, uh, if I talk about Karnataka, uh, people have a lot of, you know, respect for the Chitra painting, you know, and if you're talking something with using the Chitra painting, or if you're talking something using Dolu Kunita, it easily, people usually, you know, easily accept it and people, it's easy understanding, easy acceptance, easy, you know, respect. So I think uh, folklore has a lot of uh, potential in communication and we haven't, you know, used it at, as much. I think, uh, uh, you know, the government has been using it uh, now, uh, recently I've seen uh, to talk about the health and hygiene and, you know, we were, you know, mm, uh, yeah. uh, I have seen some you know, people using folk painting to talk about that. Yeah, I think it's yeah. slowly starting. Yeah, there's no difference between them. Uh, myth is also a folklore. I mean, it's a so knowledge about, about, a, about a community and which the community holds, you know, uh, close to their heart. So it is also a part of folklore. Folklore is the general umbrella under which everything will come. The legends, myth, folk tales. Then build confidence, I feel. We have not, our generation probably have not uh, built uh, so much of confidence in our own cultural identity that we have, uh, you know, uh, that it's been passed on now. Not one them evidence that a Madhubani painting or a Bihu song has a contemporary uh, content to it. It can, it has the vocabulary to talk about your issue, your contemporary issue, and it can, you know, have a dialogue with you. We need to show that, uh, demonstrate that. So this is what I feel.